Hey friend, and welcome to this video. Today we are going to look at six mistakes that Christians make when they defend Christianity. And so if you're a Christian and you're interested in defending your faith, we want to avoid these six mistakes. And if you want to find out what these mistakes are, keep on listening and keep on watching this video. So before I continue on, I want to advise you and remind you, if you like this video, please like, subscribe and share, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Now let's take a look at these six reasons, or these six mistakes, I should say, that Christians make in defending the Bible. The first one is relying too heavily on emotional appeals without providing substantial evidence or logical reasoning. It's basically an over-reliance on emotional appeals. That's the first mistake. While emotions are important, they cannot substitute for a rational foundation of faith. So how do we correct this? We want to use a balanced approach that combines emotional resonance with intellectual rigor. Apologists um, emphasize the importance of logical arguments in apologetics. Uh, Christians should familiarize themselves with classical arguments for God's existence, such as the Kalem cosmological argument, the teleological argument, and the moral argument. Now, what is a second mistake that Christians make in defending Christianity? Well, they use, well, they they lack something. They have ignorance. Ignoring scientific evidence. We cannot ignore scientific evidence. Dismissing or ignoring scientific evidence that seems to contradict Christian doctrines is wrong. This can alienate scientifically minded individuals and give the impression that Christianity is anti-science. And let me tell you, Christianity is not anti-science, it's pro-science. We are open to investigating and open to studying nature around us and to help us understand the Bible and to help us understand things. So how do we correct this? We, we need to engage with, sci with scientific evidence. We need to engage with scientific evidence thoughtfully and respectfully. Um, there are different advocates for this scientific approach in supporting science. Um, there, are, uh, there are apologists who advocate for integrating scientific findings with biblical interpretation. Christians should study and understand the evidence for the Big Bang Theory and evolutionary biology and show um, how these things can support our uh, understanding uh, of the Bible and science. Now, as a Seventh-day Adventist, I believe that God created everything in six literal days. And that word day in Hebrews yam means a literal 24-hour period. So as a Christian, I am convicted that God did miraculously create everything we know and see in six literal days. And I believe science can support this, and it has. Um, now, let's look at the third mistake, being dogmatic about non-essentials. Being overly dogmatic about non-essential doctrines, such as the interpretations of the end times or secondary theological issues, is dangerous and, and it's important to know it's wrong. Uh, this can create unnecessary division and distract from the core message of the gospel. So the whole idea about correcting this is turn your focus away for a moment from end times Bible prophecy and secondary theological issues and focus on the key things that are really important in convincing someone to join the, the Christian faith. Now, I'm not saying set aside prophecy and set aside those good things in the Bible. That's not what I'm saying. But for the purpose for apologetics, you want to focus on the essentials. You want to focus on the essentials of Christian faith, such as the resurrection of Jesus, the nature of God, and the plan of salvation. Uh, there's a man, C.S. Lewis. Uh, he wrote in Mere Christianity. And in that, um, in, in that uh, resource that he'd written, well, he argues for concentrating on the central tenets of Christianity that unite believers rather than those that divide. Uh, his approach helps in presenting a unified and compelling case for Christianity. So let's focus on the essentials. Now, the fourth mistake that Christians make is having a poor understanding of opposing views. We need to understand opposing views in order to meet them. Uh, we can uh, make the mistake of misrepresenting or inadequately understanding the views of those who disagree with Christianity. This can lead to straw man arguments and weaken the apologist's credibility. And that's definitely something we do not want. So how do we correct this? Well, we need to study and accurately represent opposing viewpoints. This involves reading primary sources from atheistic, agnostic, or other religious perspectives. Uh, we need to emphasize the importance of engaging deeply with philosophical arguments against theism. By understanding and accurately representing these views, Christians can provide more effective counter-arguments. 
so what is the fifth? What is the fifth um, mistake that Christians make? It's the lack of humility and grace. That's a fifth mistake that we have. Engaging in debates with arrogance or condescending attitude is wrong. This can push people away rather than drawing them to consider the Christian faith. My friend, we don't handle the devil's tools. You know, pride and arrogance and condescension, those are the devil's tools. We need to set, them, set those aside and go away from those. Now, how do we correct this? Apologetics should be conducted with humility and grace. That's the solution. 1 Peter 3.15 advises Christians to be always be prepared to give an answer, uh, but to do so with two things, gentleness and respect. Uh, Well-known apologists consi consistently emphasize the importance of respecting the dignity of those with whom we disagree with and present arguments with kindness and humility. And so we as Christians need to keep that in mind, and I really hope that those who disagree with Christianity also keep that in mind. We need to be able to respectfully disagree when we do. Now, a last mistake that Christians make when defending Christianity is overemphasis on apologetics at the expense of personal witness. When we focus on so much intellectual argumentation that the personal and relational aspects of faith are neglected, it's a big mistake. This can make Christianity seem more like an intellectual exercise rather than a transformative relationship with God. Now, how do we correct that? Well, we need to combine intellectual defense with personal testimony and with the demonstration of the transformative power of the Christian faith. Uh, Lee Strobel, in his book, The Case for Christ, he combines rigorous investigation with personal stories of faith. Strobel's approach uh, shows that intellectual arguments and personal experience together make a compelling case for Christianity, the case for Christianity. So by addressing these common mistakes, Christians can provide a more robust, respectful, and effective defense of their faith that resonates with both the heart and the mind. And let me tell you, the scriptures have resonated with my heart and mind. When the Lord got a hold of me, he transformed my life. And I know when the Lord gets a hold of you and gets a hold of your friends, he'll transform their lives too. But he's going to use you and I to affect their conversion. Remember these six mistakes and avoid them. And apply those corrections that I mentioned in your life and see what the Lord will do in winning your friends and family and your co-workers and colleagues to the faith. May God bless you and keep you until we study again. Thank you.